Hello everyone and welcome back to Broden Plays Distant Worlds Universe! A Distant Worlds tutorial. So, I had started recording a little bit on this game. Uh, what had happened is I started coughing out my lungs and I figured that coughing my lungs out on screen is not a very appropriate way to play. So I decided to start over here. So we have paused the game. The first thing that you want to do when you click that start playing button is you want to pause it so that um, other empires don't get ahead of you. Now what we will first do is we'll take a look at all of these different menus and what they do. Everything here on the side and everything here on the screen. So we're going to do a navigation of the screen a little bit. First thing I want to go into is the open the colony screen. Actually the first thing that I'm going to go into is open empire policy screen. I wish I always wish that this is the first thing that people would go into because it teaches you a lot about the automation of the game and what you can expect to automate and what you can control yourself. Excuse me for a minute, I do need to cough my lungs out one more time, I'm going to pause the recording. Thank you so much for your patience guys. One other thing that I will go ahead and say about this game is just check out the music. The music is fantastic, I love the way that it sounds, uh, I just... I love the music in this game. It is fantastic. So let's go. I said fantastic and love a lot in that last sentence. So we'll just go over that. So open the Empire Policy screen. What this does is it shows you everything about the Empire, how much of it is going to be controlled by computers, and how much of it is going to be controlled by you. So you have complete control of what you have control of. And in a 4X game, I find this to be a little bit lacking most of the time. You have to either take control of everything, or some things are automated and you can't change them. In this game, everything except for civilian ships are actually things that you can control yourself, if you feel the need to. You can also automate everything and just watch the universe unfold. It is completely up to you. So what I do for diplomacy and treaties is I actually suggest new treaties. What you do when it says suggest is these little guys will pop up in the right hand corner and will advise you what to build, what to do, what you would, what they would do, what the AI would do. So it kind of tells you a little bit of where you can stand in the game, where they should think that you should be at, and where maybe you are at. Diplomacy, war, and trade sanctions. What this is, is it, it, it's basically who declares war on you and when you can have trade sanctions in the game. Use blockades when have trade sanctions against an empire. I want to do suggest because I don't know a lot about war and trade sanctions, so we'll learn a little bit about that as it goes. Now, diplomacy gifts, I do control manually. I want to say I control completely when gifts are given out. Economy and trade, I'm going to trade with other empires, everything is normal, and that's all controlled normally as well. Now when it comes to intelligence mission assignment, I want to control, man control that manually as well. So this has to do with our characters, with our, um, it actually has to do with our intelligence character and what missions they go on. I will teach you a little bit more about characters in a later tutorial and we will continue on with the menus from there. Colonization is whether or not you colonize a planet and I will be right back momentarily. I swear to Bob. Every single time that I start recording a video, I start coughing up my lungs. Maybe it's a sign that I'm not good at recording videos, but we'll just uh, we'll go ahead and ignore that for now and continue on. So colonization, I control that manually, whether or not a planet is to be colonized. So let's continue on from there. These are all pretty self-explanatory. Colonies, facility buildings, are buildings that you can build on the colony. I'm going to control that manually as well. Uh, colony tax rate. I'm going to fully automate the tax rate because I don't like to deal with taxes. Now, what taxes do is they give you your income right here. Our cash flow is plus 8,046, so we need money. We need taxes, and taxes is the main way to generate money. Well, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and balance between how much you want your colony to grow and how much money you want. If you tax a lot from your colonies, then they're not going to grow very much. But if you don't tax at all, they're going to grow a lot, but you're not going to get any kind of income. So what I do for this is if a colony is very starting out uh, below two, 200 million people, I'm going to put it at zero. From there, I'm going to go normal. And if it's above that much, then I'm going to go high. The reason being is because I want as much income as I can have without stunting the growth of my colonies, and that's the best way to do it. So I fully automate that so that the computer will take control of that, because especially if we have multiple colonies, we don't want to be going to each colony and changing the tax rate over and over again. That would be a pain in the butt. So research and design. 
we're going to control research manually and control ship design manually. So we're actually going to be in control of all of the research and all of the ship designs. This is going to be a huge task to undertake and I'm going to show you what happens as we undertake it. If you do control manually, then all of these menu systems right here don't matter because this is how the AI would control it. You can also control how the AI would play. So the AI would play depending on what you do. Right now, we're going to leave it all as is because we're going to control that manually. Now construction, I'm going to have it suggest new ships and bases because sometimes there's a base that I just didn't think about building and it says right here, our advisor suggests that you build a uh, research station. I'm like, you know what? That's a great suggestion, advisor. Go ahead and do that. And, and they do their job of advising pretty well. So I, uh, I keep that on suggest new ships and bases. Sometimes I do control that manually, however. Troop recruitment. These are the troops that are on the ground. They're on the colonies themselves. I fully automate that because I don't want to be dealing with all of the different colonies that we have. When we have space wars going on, we don't want to worry about ground wars. Ground wars is another thing in this game that we'll go ahead and take care of, like I said. There is a lot in this game and a lot to learn. So let's continue trucking on. For war and attacks, I did suggest attack targets for some of my games, but I'm going to control that manually. I want to depend or I'm going to depend on me on whether or not I want to start a war with somebody and whether or not I want to attack them. Right now we're going to control that manually and we're going to see who we want to attack. Now boarding and capture. This is something that I guess doesn't have a control manually or fully automated thing. So this I won't worry about right now. I do like to board and capture ships. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the game. Fleet formation. Now this is controlled manually as well. These are the fleets of the ships that we build and how we can put them into fleets for organization purposes. Now this is the Empire screen. Like I said, that's going to be all of the automation of the game, how much that you control, how much you don't control. You can absolutely have as much control over what's controlled in the game as you want. I love that because it means that it is such an easy game to get into. If you only want to control a few things and have everything else automated and focus on those couple of things, you can do that. If you want to control everything because you're a neat freak like I am and a control freak, and you know, you've had relationships in which you're a control freak and you get dumped for it, now that's the, that's the option for you. That's the option for me. So we're going to move on from there. Now that I've told you a little bit about my personal life, and we're going to go into the open colony screen. Now the colony screen are the colonies that you have. Right now we just have the one, we have the ocean planet. It has 2408 million population. This right here is the culture, how much culture it has. This is the quality of the planet. And this is the facilities that it has. It doesn't currently have any facilities. This is the system it's in, the type of planet it is. It's an ocean planet, because that's the only planet that we can actually colonize on right now. And this is the happiness. They are at nine happy. I'm not quite sure how that equates to a number, but we'll say nine happy is good happy. Tax rate is 23%. Uh, it must be, uh, let's see, it's between those two, so that's a normal tax rate. And the revenue is 42,000. So that's how much that they're bringing into the colony. And I'll show you a little bit of taxes a little bit later in this tutorial. Um, and now we're just doing colonies for now. So if you, if you look at this, um, it'll show you the location of where the star is. As you can see, it shows the whole map. So it's really nice to pinpoint exactly where that is on the map in case you need to go to it later. You can also go to galaxy or go to colony, it'll take you directly to that planet and that colony. Even if I was, you know, zoomed it out all the way, I was over here, I was maybe zoomed in on this star right here a little bit, open colony screen, go to colony, bam, it takes me to that colony. All I need to do is zoom in. There it is. Another thing that you want to take a look at is this bottom portion right here are all the different menus available to you within this menu. So menus upon sub menus upon sub menu, it's a lot in this game. So right now, this is our population. This is the growth percent of our population. This is the amount of population that we have. They are satisfied with us, plus 10. The pearl gives this colony a 5% development bonus, and the steel gives this construction speed by 5% for all ships and bases built here. Our colony has a reasonable level of development, plus 12 happy. Nemphis wine at this colony provides a plus five happy. Your empire's leader provides a 10% happiness of one. Their current tax rate is too high. Oh no, this tax rate is too damn high. So negative eight for that. Sometimes I, I like to throw in memes in my videos. You know, it's just what I do, it's what I do. 
in our cargo. This is what we have on this particular planet. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of these to start off with. The reason being in this game is because these are all the components you need to build ships. So we have a lot of those things to take a look at before the, the ships are are actually built, so we have a lot of resource of it. We want to first try and find a resource of Caslon because that is the way that we actually propel our ships, and I've had games that would pause and completely be destroyed because we've run out of fuel so none of our ships can go anywhere and we can't mine any more fuel because our mining ships are out of fuel. It's just a whole ordeal. So we'll want to find Castellan as soon as we can. We can also make our ships run on hydrogen. But that's a little, bit, a little bit later in the tech industry. Now if we look at our resources, these are the resources that are actually on the planet, the ones that are renewable. This is the percentage of resources on the planet, aka how often you are able to mine them. This doesn't equal 100 between the two. If you see 70 and 45 is 105. Actually, it's 115. I need to check my math on some things. So what this is, is how quickly it can be mined if it is being mined. One thing about mining is if you have a colony on the planet, it's automatically mining that planet. So that's fantastic. But if you don't have a colony, you can build a mining ship and the mining ship will mine. Uh, so we have 70% of polymer, 45% of dilithium crystal. Fantastic. You gotta love that to lithium crystal, whatever the hell that is. Troops and characters. These are the characters that we have in our game. These are the troops that we have in our game. As I said, we'll take care of characters a little bit later in the tutorial. Um, basically, characters are in the diplomacy screen. We'll take care of that a little bit later. You have con the construction yard. You have all the ships that are being constructed. Right now, we don't have anything being constructed, so it shows nothing. This is the arm that would construct it. This is the ship that's being constructed, the progress, and the speed at which it's being constructed. Our speed is quite high because we have so many bonuses for construction. Then you have a docking bay. These are all the ships that are docked at the station. It is nice to have a docking bay for ships docked at a station. We can actually build ships that will transport other ships, so that's a lot of fun to do. And then you have facilities. We don't have any particular facilities on this colony, so let's move on to the next one. We have open expansion planner screen. Yay! This is how we can say this is our planet right here, and these are all the different planets that we can go to. We want potential colony, resource targets by your empire, colony resource targets by galaxy, your empire resource locations, this is the only location that we have resources, and so this is the colony in which we have resources, and we have these two resources on it. Now what this does is as the game progresses, potential colonies will show you the potential colonies that, that are on here that you can actually colonize. Um, it'll show you the best colonies that there are. The resource targets by your empire priority will show you the most important colonies to colonize depending on the resources available and the priority that your empire has on them. This also will show you where to build mining stations. And also resource targets by galaxy priority, it'll show you the priority of all the different nations and races of the galaxy. So it's a little bit of an interesting thing since we haven't actually ex Another thing that you have to do is you have to explore the galaxy before you can see any planets in it or what resources they have. So we'll have exploration ships go out there and do that. Before we explore anything, we don't know anything, so we don't know where there are potential colonies. So let's exit out of that. We already did that. Oh, we did not do this menu. This menu is the empire comparison. You have victory conditions, achievements, population, territory, economy, strategic value, military strength, and top colonies. Right now, we're the only colony that we know of, so we are number one of one. We are both the best and the worst. All right, this is the Empire Policy screen. This is the game editor. The game editor, you can actually edit the game yourself. I do not actually go into that because I consider it cheating. But if you are like liking editing games, adding planets, taking away planets, adding asteroids, adding ships, doing all of that free of cost, then that is the type for you. Now open the character screen. The character screen is the screen that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Characters are a big part of this game. We'll look at all these characters that we have right now. And as characters get added, I will talk to you about them in the tutorial as well. Right now we just have a fleet admiral, and we have a leader, and we have intelligence agents. This is the role that we play, this is where they're at, and this is currently their mission. So the fleet admiral, we do not yet have a spaceship, so we can't transfer him to a ship. So right now he's just sitting there waiting on the planet. A leader is the leader of the planet. These are its traits, and this is what, uh, how well it does. 
Now, because he is corrupt and he is an eloquent speaker, he has different traits that are pluses and negative. Like the eloquent speaker gives him plus 10% colony happiness, plus 10% diplomacy. Corrupt, negative 10% colony corruption reduction, minus 10% trade income, minus 10% tourism income. So because he has those, those are some uh, fairly poor traits, but his diplomacy is pretty high. The colony happiness is higher. I like that. This is the leader of all of our colonies so if you want to change that you can actually dismiss that guy and have another guy come in but it actually puts your colony at a disadvantage as that is going on let me cough thank you very much resuming from there we have the intelligence agent this is the agent that you will be dealing with most of the time, the character you'll be dealing with most of the time. As soon as we find an empire we will target empires, we will send him on different missions throughout the empires um, right now, he's just preventing enemy intelligence missions because we don't know of any d different empires in the game. Also, he is untested. We don't know his traits or skills yet. We will know them as we test them and send them on different planets and different things to do different things. They will become tested, have different traits and skills, and they will level up and they will get better and better as game progresses as well. So as you can see, even the th simple things like characters have different levels and things that they can go through. Open the diplomacy screen. This is where we would diplomat if we can diplomat right now we cannot diplomat as we have nothing to diplomat with open your empire summary screen this is the summary now this is important for a couple of reasons number one we can change the name I guess that's not really important. It's important to me because I like that. Number two, we can change the government type that we have, but you have a revolution and switch government. What that does is it kind of puts your colony set way back so that it can be ahead in the future. If you like a different type of government, that's the thing that you want to do. If you like the government that you're in, you don't want to do a revolution. Now let's go ahead and look over here. This is the third reason why this is very important. This shows you the income. So cash on hand, this is the private sector. This is the colony itself. 56K, 42K colony revenue. Uh, it pays taxes of 8K colony taxes. It gives you 34K to end with. That's their cash flow. Our cash flow, cash on hand is 21K. We get an annual income of 8K from where? The colony taxes. So we get that and then we don't have any maintenance right now because we have no ships. So we get a total cash flow of 8K and that'll increase as our game goes on. Moving on, we have the research screen. Now the research screen is an important screen because it actually shows you all the different resources that you can do in the game. As you can see, they're kind of a vast list and they go on for miles. They continue on over here and it is just a very big list of things that you can learn. One thing that I do like about the... Whoa, what is this? Planetary destruction? That sounds so badass. Okay, we might get that later on in this game. Anyway, one thing that's nice about this is that each different tree will actually be doing research at the exact same time. So you can have one in energy and construction, one in high tech and industrial, one in weapons, and they'll all keep going at the same exact time. That, to me, is fantastic. Our research stations, this is how well we're researching right now. We don't have any research stations. Our total research capacity is 12K, 12K, 12K. And this is including the bonuses, 17K, 17K, 17K. This is the total empire research potential, 563k. We cannot research faster than that. However, as you can see, we're far below that. So we have a lot of things that we can go to research. So this is our maximum ship size for now, maximum base size right now when it's not at a colony. Those will increase as we research uh, bigger ships and bases. All right, so we have the design screen. The design screen is where we can actually manually upgrade this design. These are all the components of different ships that we can add on to there. These are the components that we have in the ship. The yellow text means, hey, consider these things and putting these things on the ship. This is the ship itself. This is what it does. This is the different images of the ships that you can build. Um, this is the different power and energy that it has. This is how fast it goes. This is the industry that it allows. This is the defense. This is the firepower. This is the space reactor and the energy output thereof. So all of this is the way that we can build a ship. And we go into that by looking at these designs. We can add new designs, edit designs, copy new designs, manually upgrade designs, auto upgrade selected designs, or delete selected designs altogether. This is the meat and potatoes of what we'll be going into most of the time because we want to design our own ships, but for now, we'll take it to the next screen, the build order screen. This is how you can order different buildings. Like, I want to have 
20 construction ships. I could build that right now. However, I don't have the money to do so, so I'm not going to do that. But on the build order screen, it's a simple drag and drop as to what different ships that you want to build and how many of those you want to build, and you can purchase those for that many credits. Now we go into the construction yard screen. These are the different construction yards that we have, and these are the th different things that we can actually build. Right now we only have one construction yard. It's this one little guy right here, and he's not actually building anything at all. Then we go to the ships and bases screen. This will show us our current ships and bases in the game. We do not have any ships and bases in the game. We just have our one colony. So right now this menu is empty. I will open it up a little bit later in the game as we have ships and colonies, or I'm sorry, ships and bases so you can see what they look like. All right, then we have fleet screen. This is where we put our, our ships and bases in particular different fleets and tell those fleets how they are going to react with the enemies or with uh, allies. This is something that we will go into a little bit later as well. And we have open troop screens. These are our troops in the game. This is how many are ready to attack and defend. And these are the different types of troops that we have. Troops is something that I've had on fully automated. So we won't worry about that. Alright guys, and that's basically all the menus that we have to go over. I know that was a little bit of a lengthy tutorial video based on menus and boring stuff alone. However, I needed to get through it. We got through it. We're done with that. On the next game, we're going to start playing, and we're going to just go one after another. It's going to be a great time, and I hope that you're excited. I'm excited, and I'll see you guys next time.